This Immortal by Roger Zelazny. So this is episode 37 of a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. And this is a list of 140 books that Easton Press has curated. And I'm reading through all of them and posting videos for every book in this series that I read. Now, most people have probably heard of Roger Zelazny. He's most famous for, for the Lord of Light and the Amber series. I had never really heard about this book. I picked it up um, as I was gathering books off the list. And then I come to find out that this book, it was published in 1965, and it was some short stories that were in the magazines before, and then it was put together in a novel. We see that a lot in, in this time period. But this book won the Hugo Award in 1966 for Best Novel. But what's interesting is that year, there was two books that actually won it. It was a tie. The other book that won, most everyone has heard of, it's Dune by Frank Herbert. So this book is on everyone's list of top science fiction. Anywhere you look, you'll, you'll see this book. The movie's great. I mean, this, this book is everywhere. But how many people do you hear talking about this book? So that intrigued me. Once I kind of put two and two together and, and grabbed this book, I knew it was on the list. I knew I was going to read it at some point. And then I caught a little blurb about what this book was about. And so it really interested me. I moved the book up on the list um, so I could read it right away. And man, I'm glad I did. This, this was a really awesome book. Now, I love Dune. I used to always say it was one of my favorite science fiction books of all time. It still is. Um, but it's, it's just a completely different book. I, I think they both deserve to win. This is just such a unique, different book. It's really hard to compare them, and I'm not going to go into any kind of comparisons like that or anything. So let's just kind of get into it. There's a couple things I want to talk about first. This book has some kind of Greek mythology themes in it, which is very unique. I've never read a science fiction book that kind of delved into that territory. I guess maybe Einstein intersection had some mythology and stuff, but it was so confusing I really didn't know what was going on. So that was unique, but some of the characters' na names and some of the stuff going on with Greek mythology, um, I'm not an expert in that. I'm not going to try to pronounce the names. And I don't... Th there could be some things I missed with not knowing about a lot of Greek mythology. So... Take that. And then the other thing is, this is one of those books that at times you kind of have to just keep reading, not really knowing exactly what's going on to get it explained to you. And Roger Zelazny will explain things to you for the most part. But in the beginning, I was a little disoriented. It was a little confusing, but I plowed through and and. Thoroughly enjoyed the book. And this is a 190-page um, book that I have here. I have an Ace science fiction copy, vintage paperback. It's a later printing. I think this one came from 1974. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into kind of what this book is about because it has an amazing premise and it instantly hooked me. So we have a future Earth that's post-apocalyptic. We don't know how long ago this happened. We don't know how far in the future we are. And we don't really know the details of what happened, but we know there was some sort of nuclear event, it, probably a war. And it's basically rendered the whole Earth into this big wasteland. And there's hot spots of radioactivity. Um, but even outside of those hot spots, the, the planet has kind of been riddled with radiation. So the 4 million humans that are left on the planet and the animal life have kind of all mutated in different ways due to this radiation. So that's the setting on Earth. And then once you start reading this, I started hearing references to these vegans. And I'm thinking, man, Roger Zelazny was way ahead of his time. He was putting vegans in his stories in the 60s. But it turns out this is... The planet Vega, we have some blue aliens, and they're called Vegans. So once I sorted that out, 
I realized we didn't have vegans in this book, and it was aliens. So these aliens, they've been in contact with Earth. They know what's happened to the Earth. You know, they're aware of the whole thing. They're really intrigued that they met this civilization that, w that basically wiped themselves out. I think at one point they said that of all their travels in the galaxy or the universe, they, this is the first civilization they've seen that has basically wiped themselves out. So they're intrigued by them, but they also kind of use Earth as a place to go on vacation, they buy some land, they kind of go there and hang out, they check out the sites that are left and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of the setup. Uh, I guess one more thing, the main character in this book, his name is Conrad, and this is kind of a depiction of him on the cover. And he as well has been affected by this radiation He's kind of got like this fungus on his face. We don't know a ton about him. He's kind of this mysterious figure. But we do know that he's really, really old. Like, we don't know how old, but it seems like he's probably the oldest human alive. And it doesn't seem like there's, like his death is eminent or anything. So I think that, you know, obviously the title, This Immortal, could, could have to do with our main character, Conrad. And this story is, is written all in first person from the point of view of Conrad, this kind of caretaker of Earth. That's kind of one of his roles on the Earth. And he's kind of been chilling out, relaxing when we start this novel out. And he doesn't have to do much work. He's kind of a figurehead in a way, and he does a few things. But it's kind of unclear exactly what his role is. But he's contacted in the begin beginning of this book because one of these vegans, these blue aliens, is coming to Earth and he specifically requested Conrad take him on a tour of all the major sites of Earth. And supposedly he's going to write a book or something like that, but it's all real mysterious. And when we finally get to meet him, he has this entourage with him. He has some assassins and some women and um, kind of this little ragtag group, all unique, interesting characters. And Conrad gets to meet up with them to take this vegan on the grand tour of Earth and show him what's left of some of our sites, like the pyramids and the Sphinx and some of these big sites. That's kind of the, the setup and the plot of the book. So that's about where I'm going to stop right there because this book, it's, it's, um, it's mysterious. It's, you're not sure what's going on. You kind of have little bits of an unreliable narrator through the eyes of our man Conrad since he's telling the story all from his point of view. But it's just done really well. The, <clears throat> there's some plot twist as Conrad's taking him around the planet. They're always trying to figure out what the true intentions of this alien is. They're even starting to try to figure out what the intentions are of some of the people in his entourage. So it's done really well and it all comes together at the end and I feel is a fairly satisfying ending and I pretty much enjoyed the whole book. It was 190 pages, it didn't take that long to read but <clears throat> it was great. There was no slowdowns for me. It kept going. Um, I, I liked everything about this, and especially Zelazny's prose. His prose is, it just flows. It's, even though parts of the book were confusing what's going on, it kind of had this poetic um, cadence to it, I almost want to say. It was just, it was, Easy to read if you once you understood what was going on. I'll put it that way. I had to reread some sections to try to figure out what was going on. But once I got into it, it, it was a breeze to read. Also, this um, like Greek mythology element, it was just tied in in a unique way. It didn't like overpower the book, but it gave it a definitely like a unique feel. So I I gotta say this was was great. I'm. Probably going to give it four stars. It was pretty close to being a five-star read for me. There was maybe one little section towards the end that 
let me down a little bit, but that's that's just me. But anyways, if if you haven't read this book and you're into science fiction, you know, definitely seek this thing out. It's Zelazny's first novel, so I assume it's a really good place to start. I'm going to probably read Lord of Light next, or I also have one called Doorways in the Sand, I think it's called. Um, but I just can't wait to read more of his works because his writing style, his choice of themes, um, everything about this book I really enjoyed. If, if you've read it too before, I think this would be a great reread, especially if it's been a long time. I've always kept, well, for the last like couple decades, I've kept track of all the books I read on a spreadsheet. This was even before Goodreads, really. And I have a column where I can check if I want to reread a book in the future. And I definitely checked that one for this one because um, in the future, I could definitely see enjoying another read of this one. So, so that's about it for that review. Next, uh, I'm reading The Best of Hal Clement. And I've read the first one here. I probably won't do like a formal book review for this one. We've got Matt at Science Fiction Reads and Richard at Vintage SF, who we're all three reading this and we're trying to figure out some way to maybe do a collaboration video or something on, on some of these short stories from Hal. So that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.